Hi guys, it's Claire's. Uh, today we are going to do a tutorial on these cute little um, spring flowers in a glass tumbler. Um, I've pre-drawn this and I am going to have the this sketch available as a download. So if you want to trace it, you can use this as a trace and then kind of go along with me for the painting. Now, I'm going to warn you guys that I have not really tried painting glass before, so I might introduce new things in uh, on a whim, so kind of bear with me. Or, yeah, you're just going to have to bear with me. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I've never done glass before, so I'm kind of slightly nervous about it, but we're going to just go ahead and try it and see in real time how it turns out. So for my brushes, I am using... Um, the Neptune number eight, I'm going to have my squirrel mop in the one and then the number four silver black velvet. I just have this one on the side in case I need to use it. It's just a regular round six. And uh, for colors, I'm going to be using like a light purpley pink or mauve, um, green, a yellow, dark brown, so kind of have those colors ready on hand. Uh, I have a little bit of color right here and I don't intend to use too, too much color. So I'm kind of just going to go with this. And uh, yeah, let's see how it turns out. All right, so let's begin. So to begin with, I am going to start off with the... I'm going to start off with the, with the flower itself. Uh, and to do that, I am going to, actually, no, let's start off with the tumbler first. And then, no, sorry. Sorry. Let's start off with the flowers first. So, to begin with, uh, let's do the uh, number eight. And I have my water off to the side. I have my uh, paper towel as well. So, just keep all of that handy. And I'm just going to get some of my, my green. I have some green in here too. So I'm just going to take some from here and mix it on here. Possibly get some of the blue as well so I can get like another variation if I want to. Then I have a little bit of yellow there so I can mix it there too if I want a different um, color of the green or shade of the green. And to start... I will do the stem. So we're just going to loosely go up with the stem. And then what I'm going to do is take a little bit of that bluey green and add some at the bottom. And I think the strategy here should be, obviously, the area that's outside should be the darkest because it's not blurry by the bottle. But you want to have hints of the green on the inside as well. Or like hints of the darkness on the inside as well. That's what I mean. But I'll have the darkest being the one that's exposed on the out. And then I'm just going to make sure that the shape of this is nicer and a little more like the, the glass area can be slightly distorted because glass kind of distorts how things look anyway. So don't be too big on that. Like perfecting that, I mean. And then uh, I will do the leaves, which should be super easy really at this point because this is a loose painting. So dark on the inside, and then I'm just going to lightly do that. I'll take some more dark and start here. I'm dipping some water and do 
this other leaf right there. Okay. Uh, I'm good with those. I think there's a there's a leaf right here as well. So I'm just going to lightly do that. And leave that as is. Oh, there is a stem right here too. So I'm going to have that stem painted in. There we go. And now we can start with the florals over here. So for the florals, I am using like a light pinky mauve. So I'm going to mix those colors right there that I already have and then some of the pink right here. Mix it in there. And I'll lay on some color first. Sorry, some water. So it's a nice soft kind of feel and then at the tip I'm just going to add the purple and then just add some at the top as well and then just leave it like that like this is how I'm leaving it so literally all I did was add water touch some at the bottom touch some at the top and it kind of gives you that nice flow of color with white spaces so for the for the actual big flower that I have I'm going to use my number one squirrel mop brush and I'm going to take some of this pre-mixed color and I want to very loosely do the strokes because this is going to be slightly tricky because I need it to be thin and not thick. So I just want these C type strokes and it needs to be thin with white space and then I'm applying the strokey effect on the top as well. And pre-drawing it really helps because then you kind of have an idea of where the color is supposed to be going and you're not kind of guessing or messing things up. So I'm just doing little strokes all over. And lots of white space. And you keep going and going and going and make your strokes smaller as you go more on the inside. And I've just taken slightly more color to like emphasize some of the strokes inside. And actually for this I'm going to use the number four because now I want the color to be slightly more saturated so uh, I want it to be thin as well so I'm just gonna go in because it's going to be dark light on the outside getting dark on the inside um, and I want to just lightly put strokes in and the closer we get to the center the tighter the the color will be next to each other if that makes any sense so try and envision that when you're painting I mean if you have a reference image that really does help or you can just use this painting uh, that I'm doing as a reference when the time comes it's really up to you so just closer closer strokes making sure that you have lots of white space and then I'm just going to add some over here as well. Even though this has dried up a little bit. And just some of the edges. And then you have that like nice, really flowy, loose. Hi guys, so the way that I did this flower right here got... Um, the file, uh, the recording of that got corrupted. So I'm just re-recording this on another sheet of paper um, just so you guys can see how that works and uh, you don't miss out on that tutorial. It's super simple. 
Uh, and for that, I used the colors um, the dark brown, the yellow, orange, and then a brighter orange. So these are the three colors I used for that. So I'm using my number four and I'm just going to get some of that deep brown right here. Just going to make sure my brushes are clean as well. So I'm getting some of that dark brown and I'm just going to I'm just going to turn this around so it's easier <clears throat> and I'm just going to start dabbing but before I start dabbing I'm noticing that it's a little bit too bright the camera so let me just adjust that all right much better so I'm just going to start dabbing to do the center of that flower actually let's do it here because we have some here and dabbing. And I'm leaving like white space. All right, and then once I'm happy with the kind of circular um, shape that I've made using this dab technique, I'm going to take my squirrel mop brush Actually, no, not my squirrel mop brush. I'm going to take my number eight um, Neptune, Princeton Neptune, and just get some of that orange that I have here. And then essentially all I'm doing is creating the petals. And so you're just going to hold down and just form the petal and push the color down. So creating the petals, leaving white space if you must. You can touch the center if you want. Using variations in terms of uh, how much water and color consistency you have going on. You can create like this Super pretty and easy, loose floral. And you're just going to keep on doing this action throughout, I mean, all around. that there and then do some here on this side and that's that and then now finally you can go in with the with this orange that you have and you can add it in just spread it on like that, just to give that variation, especially where it is still damp. You know, I like my two tones. I just find adding a second color, like either a darker version of it or just like a monochromatic color always adds a little something extra. I've repeated myself so many times on this. Sorry if I sound like a broken record but I just feel like it's such a, it just elevates the painting to the next level. So that's how this is done. And uh, you can go back in and intensify the brown in the center if you wish. You just go and dab. And because it's damp, you might even get some nice blending or you might not, it's perfectly fine because it's supposed to be like a nice loose floral. So that's how you do that. Um, for the side flower, the one that kind of protrudes that way, I can show you how you do that as well. That's super simple. 
let's just do it here. So you're doing it in the shape of like a semicircle, the same um, pointillism center that I like to call it. So just put that, lay that brown down in a semicircle, not a circle. And then you can use the same number four, get some of the yellow, some of the yellow that you have going on, the yellow orange, and then you just touch the center and create the petals. And again, because they're loose, you don't have to do, like you don't have to fill up the petals or like be super, uh, what's the word? Detailed while painting it. You can just kind of let it just like loose strokes, just flick your brush a claw. The oh, flick your brush strokes uh, so it's a lot looser. And yeah, that's it. And as per usual, I like to just add a little bit more shape and color just so it's not just one standard color. And there we go, we're done. So these flowers are super simple. I hope you guys like this. And you can continue with the rest of the tutorial now, guys. Okay, so we're gonna lay this color on. So let's do this. So I'm gonna start off with the edges because that's where you wanna see the most and then the ridges is the next area same right here and here and then you keep doing that I want the edges to be the darkest and then just random strokes on the inside. And at the bottom too, I want that to be fairly dark because again, you're supposed to be seeing a shadow of sorts. So like that. And then the, yeah, the inside can be lighter so you can add some water. So I'm gonna add some water using this to the color I've laid down. Oops, I didn't realize I was gonna use, guys, I completely forgot. I was gonna use this brush instead, so sorry. You can use either of them. And I'm just adding it in there. And I'm smoothing out the color that I that kind of flared up at the bottom. And now I'm gonna try and go in here and get some light stuff here. Careful not to paint over the leaves. And I'm gonna try and give it more. edge uh, color, coloring. And I'm just gonna leave that for now. We wanna do like the water here as well. And so for that, we need to have like a darker um, lay of color at the top here to show that Here's where the water ends or, yeah, ends, I guess. Or it's up to here. Yeah, let's let's use that instead. Um, so I'm going to use, again, some of this. And I'm going to try and mix it in with the purpley pink that I have. And then I'll just lay on some color. Oops, I had some gray on here. Some color... 
Yeah. It's too much water. So that the squirrel mop brush can do that to you sometimes. Like it's just like a lot of water because it holds a lot of water because it's such a great brush. Depending on what you're doing, obviously. And now I'm going to go take this. Hopefully I don't have too much water on this. And I'm just going to add some of that nice mauve purple. There we go. And then uh, maybe even like a, I do like a dark stroke at the edge after wiping off some of the water, just to show that shadow reflection in the water. And then just light areas where you kind of have more emphasis on the on this color as opposed to other areas and again this is just to kind of give it that realistic loose feel that hey there's water in here and you want it to stand out more than the other areas right so just doing that and I'm going to leave it at that. You can introduce some blue in it too if you wish. Just a little bit of hints here and there. Don't worry, it won't uh, it won't dry as dark. So it's not going to look random. Just make sure that the blue on your on your brush isn't too saturated and you're good to go you're fine you can add some here and there on the glass itself so it shows like a light reflection if you want I'm just choosing to add it on the inside just so it kind of is more like acts as a highlighter more than anything else you know, like when you put highlighter on your face and your nose area, you want to like make that pop. That's exactly what we're trying to do over here. So at the, so this is essentially the whole painting. Um, if you feel like you want to go in with a darker shade just to kind of go around the edges, absolutely do it. If not, this is your finished loose product, like a for loose painting with spring florals. I hope you guys have liked this. Thanks so much guys for watching and uh, please do subscribe if you enjoy these tutorials. I love hearing from you guys so please write in the comments, uh, write to me in the comments, share your work if you must. I am on social media so uh, very active on Instagram and Facebook so I'd love a follow um, and uh, sharing of artwork on there too. So thanks guys again and we will chat soon. Bye.